This tutorial covers film scanning. If you're using the Nikon scanner, just skip ahead in the video. For the Epson V600, go ahead and open the lid and pull out the white sheet that's in the background. This reveals the backlight for the scanning, uh, film scanning process. Really good idea to grab one of the blowers and blow off any dust on all the glass surfaces. And while you're at it, clean off any fingerprints uh, or any other grease that may have accumulated on the glass surfaces. Make sure that the scanner is plugged into your computer via the USB cable. This way the scanning software recognizes the scanner. At this point you have to choose the correct film tray. There are a couple different to choose from. Uh, one of them comes from the V370 Epson scanners, while two of them are from the V600. Uh, they are not interchangeable. This scanning demonstration we need to use 120 film, so I'll use the largest film tray possible. Uh, oriented correctly so that the film tray runs right down the middle of the scanner and aligns with the backlight. Carefully open the film tray and insert your film emulsion side up. Uh, the emulsion side is the dull side. Another way to think of this would be insert your film so that the shiny side faces down. Uh, there's nothing terrible about mixing this up, but if there's any text in your photographs, it'll be reversed if you put it emulsion side down. The rest of this tutorial happens in the software. On your computer, open up the software called Epson Scan. If you have multiple scanners installed, select the correct scanner from this prompt window. Epson Scan often launches in full auto mode. You'll want to switch that right away to professional mode so that we have more scanning options. Starting at the top, we'll switch our uh, scanning document to film. You can select black and white film. You can even select your color space if you'd like to. Uh, but the most important adjustment that we'll make in here is DPI. I'm going to shoot at 2400 DPI. I would recommend scanning at the highest possible quality uh, given the amount of time you have. Higher the quality, the slower the scan. There are a few other places you can make adjustments in this window. Um, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and jump right into the preview mode. Once your preview scan is finished, what you'll see in the window uh, has two different possible view options. You'll be able to view your files as individual images or as one solid strip. Uh, this is going to affect how your file will be saved eventually. So whether you choose thumbnail uh, or normal, that will uh, produce three files or one file. When you're ready to scan, go ahead and click the scan option back in the uh, original window. In here you have a few options like uh, your export to uh, or the location you're going to save. I highly recommend saving to the desktop. Then click on your JPEG options and set it to the highest possible file size and click scan. Depending on the speed of your computer and the resolution you chose in the previous screen, your scans could take quite a while. Uh, for three images scanned at 2400 DPI, I'm probably going to be between 10 and 20 minutes, so I'll just fast forward this part of the tutorial. At this point, your scans are complete. Uh, Finder will open up and show you where they are on the desktop. Probably not a bad idea just to double check the files with the preview to make sure that the scan went okay. And from here on out, all of your work will be done in Photoshop. If you're using the Nikon scanner, start by powering it on with the big silver button. This scanner will only accept film in strips of 2 to 5, and only 35mm film. Feed your film into the scanner, emulsion side down, and eventually the scanner will pull it from you. The software used to run this scanner is called ViewScan, and it's not freely available, so you probably have to use one of the school computers. After closing out a couple of pop-ups, we'll jump right into customizing our scan. So starting at the top, we're going to scan to file. Our source is going to be the LS5000. If you don't see that as one of your sources, you'll have to shut the program down, plug the scanner in, and then relaunch the software. Just kind of a glitch. Next, we want to tell the scanners that we're scanning black and white negatives, and that we are we're going to first do a batch scan or batch a list. Now, batch because we're scanning multiple negatives. 
now there's a lot of other things to kind of work with in here, but again, the most important is probably resolution. This scanner's peak resolution is 4000 DPI. If I scroll down through here, you can see a lot of these other edits that are available. These are not necessary to adjust to get uh, to get kind of base raw scans. So moving along this top file uh, underneath uh, crop, let's just crop it in a maximum file size. And then some of these other edits are non-essential. Uh, let's move right into output so that we can tell it to save to the desktop. In here, we can also adjust our JPEG options, highest possible quality and lowest possible compression. Underneath our color options up top, uh, there is an option to kind of select different types of film. Uh, this is sort of one of those other options that may be interesting for you to experiment with. At this point, you're ready to click preview. Uh, this will run a little bit slowly, so I'll speed this part of the tutorial up. It's also important to say at this point, too, uh, if you're planning on scanning all five of the photographs in your photo strip, you should probably set your batch scan to auto. If you're planning on scanning just individual images, list works just fine. At this point, if everything looks good in your previews, you can click scan and it goes through again, kind of a time consuming uh, scan. Five negatives may take you between uh, five and 10 minutes. To get your film out of the scanner, just close the program down and it'll be ejected. And you can begin the whole process over again.